Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Thank you very much for joining me. On our last stream, we developed a firmware for ESP32 to work with the battery. Uh, since then, I updated the application and it is ready to be beta tested. So let me show you how to download it and how to install it and how to use it. Not much to it. So we're going to go to um, community.blackhorserepairs.com slash bhr underscore battery uh, slash publish HTML. Right? It's the same uh, deployment method that I use for Rework Pro and all the other software. And either click launch over here. If you're already using uh, Rework Pro, it's the same dependency. Uh, so you don't have to install anything. Uh, you can run it on Mac, Linux, Windows, whatever you use. Otherwise, hit install and it'll install all the dependencies. Then you're going to go to uh, same address, but firmware.zip and it'll download a zip file. And the zip file, just follow the readme file. There's uh, three ways of flashing it, um, whichever one you want to use. Just flash it. Um, you flash it to any ESP32. Just make sure, at least in the current configuration, uh, the pins that we're utilizing for I2C are pins uh, 4 and 5. It's 4 for clock and 5 for data. Now, if your ESP32 doesn't expose those two pins, these are actually the usually uh, both Heltec, the regular ESP32 like this one, the uh, high let go. Uh, they all utilize pins 4 and 5, so you should be good. Otherwise, just, just let me know. I'll, I'll send you a, a custom firmware uh, to whatever pins you want to set your I2C. The display is disabled, so you don't have to worry about that. Once installed, it's going to show up as uh, BHR battery diagnose app. Uh, just select the COM port you connected the device to. In my case, it's COM7. There is a version for AVR microcontrollers, which will use uh, 9600 uh, bus speed, but just leave this as 115200 and hit connect. Uh, once connected, you can see all that data that we retrieved yesterday. As you can see, we have two alarms now. So our battery status is C0 instead of 80. And we are discharging because the power supply is connected. Uh, we can just go to auto refresh. So the, the list just refreshes every couple seconds. Once we supply power to the battery, you'll see how the how the current is going up all the way to one amp and uh, the cells are are recharging so our voltage is, is growing you also notice that we switch back to 80 so we only have overcharged alarm now i was thinking that that overcharged alarm could be just stored because the cells physically bulged up uh, there's a good chance that the the voltage on the cells grow uh, grew uh, too high who knows we'll figure it out now after uh, after that so first we can uh, try to unseal the battery so these are the keys we tried yesterday uh, manufacturer access at uh, zero zero and operation status at 54. so all of these you can just update based on whatever chip you're working on and try to unseal now obviously unseal doesn't work i didn't have ch i didn't have any luck with this battery but we'll see once i get uh, batteries from nathan uh, we'll see how many i can um, i can actually unseal now should the unseal be successful then you can go to reset the battery and the same thing uh, the manufacturer access can be different on uh, on other uh, bq chips so uh, i'm at the moment, everything is only tested with bq 40 z 50 Hit reset and the uh, same thing. Uh, this will take a few seconds because it's trying a few things like PF uh, clear and all kinds of um, stuff. But in this case, since the battery is not unsealed, this won't, won't work anyways. And that is pretty much it. These are the only functionalities we have at the moment. Uh, so if you have some batteries, just um, see if you can find the keys. If it does work, if you find the keys that do work, uh, if you can just um, 
make a note of that, share it, share it with uh, someone. Um, our goal is to build a database of those keys and stuff, and uh, the application will no longer need to ask you for all these all this data. It'll just know. It'll first of all, it will detect the chip, and then based on the chip detected, or perhaps a manufacturer. Uh, of the battery or um, device name, perhaps we'll see once um, once we get enough batteries. It, it'll make a determination which keys to use, which registers, and all that kind of stuff. But this is it. Uh, it's an open beta. Uh, it works the same way as Rework Pro. So as soon as I release an update to the application, uh, it'll auto update. Uh, however, the firmware. You just have to flash yourself. Uh, once we have a stable firmware, I will be also distributing the ESP32 devices with firmware already installed on them. Uh, you can either update it or upload it via USB uh, or uh, Ethernet. If you connect the if you connect the device to the Wi-Fi, you can do over-the-air update, um, which might. Uh, Supposedly, it's supposed to be easier. I find it a little more complex. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to just connect it to the USB port and uh, start the script, pick the port, and, and that's it. And it will just flash the firmware. This is it. Hopefully, this will be useful. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have any questions or any problems running the application, um, check the Discord, the Battery Analyzer channel. Don't spam just any channel, um, and it, hopefully at least one of us will be able to, to help you. Uh, there might be plenty of bugs, so uh, most likely there are, and as you've seen how the code was being developed, there is definitely going to be some bug. Based on the feedback we receive on, on this and, and depending on what you guys can, uh, can find, I know a lot, of, uh, a lot of you, well, maybe not a lot of you, but some of you definitely uh, that I'm in contact with, you have plenty of batteries, but uh, because of your location, you can't physically send those batteries to me. We could, instead of sending the batteries, just extract the control board and, and send the board alone, that should be easy and cheap and everything, but it's a pain to to actually disassemble the battery to to get the, the board out. Usually they are covered with some kind of epoxy or whatever, silicon or hot glue or whatever it is. Um, and obviously it is dangerous, right? This one has two, four, six cells. So they are connected across over here to the board, so it's you know it's not that it's easier said than done. Yeah, it's a it's a great idea, but it's not as as simple as it might as it might seem. So it's a lot sim simpler for you to get the application and and just test it yourself. As far as the ESPs, uh, whatever you can find, just ESP thirty two, not the not any other ESP, because you can find uh, cheaper eighty uh, sixes, but. Uh, it hasn't been tested on on that one. It should work. It should work the same in my in my view. But I, I prefer ESP32. We will also utilize the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and everything. These are the most common ones. You can get it for about um, I don't remember anywhere from like fifteen to thirty bucks. You shouldn't pay more than thirty bucks for uh, for this which is still a little bit um, aggressive price, but these are the prices nowadays. They used to be a lot more affordable back in the day for some reason. Now on Windows 10, those will not show up as a COM port without downloading the, the driver, but just, just get the driver for CP210 uh, series um, converter and, and it, it should work just fine, no problems. It's I think you can get the driver directly from the ESP32 official side, or is it uh, Espressive side or whatever, because they, they make more than just one uh, microcontroller, of course. And that's it, just three pins going to the battery. Obviously, if you have a problem like we had um, yesterday, then you know you need a, a power supply to, to recharge the, the cells or you know, wake up the wake up the battery.
but if if you have a lot of them then you can you can figure something out definitely even if you don't have the the power supply uh, don't get boards like these uh this is also esp32 as you can see uh, and has screen and camera and motion detector and two nice little buttons over here uh, very nice but uh, to actually use it you would have to solder on the wires over here because it does not expose any gpios well actually oh i'll be damn uh there are two uh port uh 21 and 22 uh but you need port 4 and 5 uh, to use it i could uh, release the version for 21 22 but don't don't get these these boards it's it's absolutely unnecessary the bare bone esp32 and that's it um happy battery hacking uh let me know what you think and if you discover anything that is useful definitely share it with the community and hopefully eventually we'll get uh we'll get um, f at least few batteries that we'll be able to unseal but even without that the application already can uh, give you a lot of information about the battery or test whether it's charging or discharging and stuff like that all right fellas thank you very much for watching i do appreciate you and i shall see you guys in the next one